Hello, colored pencil artists. When it comes to colored pencils, the surface that we choose is crucial to our final outcome. Drafting film offers an ultra smooth surface that allows colored pencils to glide effortlessly. Unlike traditional papers, drafting film is non-absorbent, preserving the vibrancy of your colored pencil pigments and maintaining sharp details. <clears throat> we all know mistakes happen and correcting them without damaging the surface of our paper is invaluable. Drafting film allows for easy erasing, giving you the freedom to refine details. Plus the erasability of drafting film is invaluable when you're working on pet portraits or wildlife to create the texture of the fur or feathers. This tutorial will show you the techniques that I've learned and used over the years. The full real-time version of this tutorial, which is several hours long, is now on my Patreon channel. Plus a one-hour tutorial with a voiceover that goes over every technique that I do to draw these cute little chicks. Hello fellow artists! In this video I will be discussing how I did these chicks on drafting film and also how great drafting film is to help loosen up. As color pencil artists, basically when we start a project, our shoulders are up to our ears because we have to do white over dark and you really have to think in advance to preserve the white of your paper. Well, with drafting film, you don't have to do that. Guess what? You can erase. Oh my gosh, hallelujah. This technique that I'm using, I do shavings with my slice tool. You know, it's really fun. And it also helps speed up the process. Drafting film doesn't really take that many layers. So here I have have a nice smooth layer for my base coat. And I, I actually can create a nice texture with it as well. Now next you'll see I'll be using Odorless Mineral Spirits, OMS, just the tiniest little bit on my sponge there, which is a soft sponge by Pan Pastel, the makers of Pan Pastel. And here we go. I've got some little feathers and some texture already. And this is great to follow with pencils going in and accentuating the shadows here that I've created. And as I said before, another great thing is that I can erase. So watch right here when I use my mono eraser and up. Oh, there's the beak. I didn't want to lose the beak and the little chick's eyes. So here I go and just following the lines that I drew in. I'm using a super sharp pencil. This is a Faber-Castell pencil that is super sharp, weapon sharp doing another layer, another coat of shavings. And here I am experimenting with my stump tool. This is the coolest thing. And I dipped my stump tool in the OMS and it created a beautiful blended feathers. So I'm using a padding motion, as you can probably tell. What I'm doing is I'm really just kind of pushing the pigment into the film, into the nooks and crannies of the film. It's very smooth, but it's amazing how it can hold pigment. A little bit about drafting film. I'm using graphics double-sided drafting film and you can actually draw on both sides. Now this is not Duralar. Duralar is totally different. The 
pencils, the pigment actually looks completely different on Duralar versus drafting film. The difference is that Duralar is a student grade film and it's not as good of quality. And even if you want to buy it to practice on it, you may get frustrated and say, I don't like drafting film, forget about it, because that's what I did. My first purchase was Duralar, and I did not like it. Um, I you know, put it aside for a few months, went back to it, didn't like it again. I watched some YouTube videos, some tutorials, still didn't like it. My friend, the award-winning Tracy Frine, works exclusively on drafting film. So I asked him what brand he uses, and he uses graphics, double-sided, and uh, that's, so that's what I got, and I'm really happy. It's, it's been night and day from Duralar. So I wasn't able to compare the two until I got it. And I actually did try different pencils. My yellows on Duralar look orange. My yellow on drafting film looks yellow. That's the big difference. And that's the hassle that I want to save you, especially if you're doing commissions or selling your art. You really do want it on professional grade substrates. Back to the drawing here, the chicks. This color was uh, cinnamon, polychromos, and it, I used it on the beak and I also used it around different areas of the chicks, both of them and their, their little paws. It's a great flesh color. Getting some final details now. This is the exciting part. This is black polychromos. Again, super sharp pencil. This looks like burnt umber. Going back and forth between um, burnt umber, sepia, bestir, and nagat. Those colors are great for shadows and bumping up tonal ranges. Now I'm still doing a lot of detail and I'm able to get a lot of detail with drafting film. And I did have to kind of hold myself back not to get too obsessed with it, which is again, us colored pencil artists, our shoulders are up to our ears, right? Getting some final touches on this little guy and the eraser, as I said earlier, that is a tool. That is just as important as your pencil, the mono eraser. Um, so definitely experiment with a mono eraser. I highly recommend using that one because you can get a really fine point with it. And I actually like using a sanding paper to get a thin or a sharp point with my eraser and then I can go in and get some fine detail that way. Finishing up the background here, actually this is not finished because this blue got really blue as you can see. I did not want to do green, I'm not a fan of green backgrounds, but I did want to do some kind of complementary color to the chick on the left. So what is a complementary color to orange? Well, it's like a blue-green. That was my thinking behind this background. No pun intended. Please join me if you are liking this tutorial and would like the full-time and real-time video and the full one hour voiceover tutorial, please join me on my Patreon page at patreon.com slash Molly's Fine Art. 
Using a Q-tip here with odorless mineral spirits again, just the tiniest little bit. I can't, I can't stress enough that the smallest amount of odorless mineral spirits I'm using here. You can also use a tissue while it's still wet and blot it up and create a cool texture. Or again, if you made a mistake, you can just lift it right up. For the final layers, I'm using more wax-based pencils, Derwent Light Fast. Uh, well, Derwent Light Fast isn't wax-based, but um, it doesn't go on as well as I noticed with the Polychromos. So towards the end, I used Luminance White, some Derwent Light Fast Black, just for some final highlights. I use the Faber-Castell brush pen for some white highlights. I wanted to see how that reacted and it did okay. And uh, some colored pencils over it, it did okay. So that actually is in my Patreon one hour video tutorial and the real time videos over four hours of me drawing these adorable munchkins, furry munchkins. I hope this tutorial was a help to you fellow artists. If it was, please hit like and subscribe to my channel because I have lots more videos planned, lots more drawing, also watercolor. It's summertime. I will be doing lots of watercolor with watercolor pencils. They are great and they help with loosening up and just having fun, which is why we're doing this, right? Okay, cheers, happy drawing. Thank you for watching.